Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we're gonna to be talking about desert hygiene. Now, have you seen this plant in our past videos before plenty of times? This is called the yucca plant. This one in particular is, particular is called the soap tree yucca. Now, you've seen us make food out of the flowers and the fruits. They're a food source that can be baked or roasted. You've seen us make cordage out of these spines right here. And long-time viewers will know that we've also made soap from its roots. Now, that was on a SOG, uh, the SOG folding shovel review. Now, for those that weren't interested in looking at a folding shovel review, they've, you know, this information might have gone past them. So I wanted to come back and revisit it and elaborate on, on a little bit more, guys, especially now that it's summer. It's 102 degrees out here. So if you're going to be out here in the desert for hiking or camping or, you know, living off grid purposes for whatever case may be, you're going to need hygiene, especially right now that you're sweating. You know, there's a lot more insects around. So, you know, the, the chances of bacteria spreading and disease is a lot more prevalent. So we're going to come back and elaborate on the roots, on the, how to make soap out of them. And then we'll talk about another plant as well called a creosote. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Okay guys, so we're just gonna go for this little one. You know, of course, when, whenever you uproot the plant, you're gonna kill it. So I'd rather just leave the, the larger ones alone, the ones that are already fruiting out, and I'm just gonna go for this little one. And of course, you can always use the other resources. The little spines can make some, some cordage as well. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and use my shovel and dig up that root. tough plant very fibrous but this is what we're after the root it doesn't look very special now but once you rinse it off you'll see that it's very bright white underneath and you can already feel the moisture so we're just gonna take this and break it down so we can use that Okay guys, so this is the yucca root. Now what we're gonna do now is scrape off all this hard outer bark to get to the soft white innards. And the innards have a chemical called saponins and that's what the natives in this region were using to wash themselves as shampoo, uh, to wash their clothing. So we're gonna get to it. We just moved to a shadier area because once again, it's 102 degrees out here and uh, man, we are just blistering out here. So let's get to it, let's get our knife and scrape that off. And the outer bark is pretty tough. You know, it's trying to protect itself. Not only that, but it's trying to preserve as much moisture as it can because it gets so dry out here. And we're not going to use this entire root. I think we're just going to probably just use this segment right here. I'll saw the rest off to save for future reference. And just for, for the sake of this video, we'll talk about, you know, we'll demonstrate on this side right here. All right, guys, well, this is good enough. As you can see, it's white on the inside. Now we're just gonna start pounding this down to just get those saponins out of there. So from here, we're just gonna start beating this up. Now you could just, as long as you have this white stuff, you're gonna be fine. So you could just cut off a chunk like this, mix it with some water, and you'll start seeing some suds. But, you know, if you wanna be a little bit more efficient with it, get your money's worth, start pounding it. It is pretty hard, it's pretty fibrous. I don't know if you can catch that, but you can already start seeing some suds there. So, I mean, even if you don't have water available for you right now, there's no water source nearby, you could just use this as is. It's not gonna be as effective, like, like regular soap, it's not gonna be as effective as when you actually mix it with water, but in a pinch it'll do. Thank you. 
check that out. All right, so now this will do just fine. Now, in case you have more time on your hands, you're gonna be here a lot longer. You can actually just pulverize this down to a powder. We're not gonna do that, but just so you can see it working now. If you have a water source, I'm not gonna use all my water, of course. I need that to stay cool out here. You can mix this. You can check that out. So there you have it, guys, the yucca root. And you know how I, was, I was, how I was saying earlier to pound it down to just release a lot more of the, the chemical, the saponins. Check this out. You just squeeze it, and it's just coming out. So I can reuse this several times. I could use it now. I could just let it dry out and then use it later. Or as I, or as I said, you could just pound this down into a powder and then use it as that way as well. But uh, really good stuff. Really clean. Smells good. Get some of this dust and some of the sweat off. That feels good. And then clean my knife as well too. So there you go, yucca root soap. Okay guys, so let's talk about another plant out here and this is a very abundant plant called creosote. This one right here. And it is just absolutely everywhere. I mean, it, not, not just here in front of me, there's actually a larger one behind me and smaller ones over here. And they're everywhere. Now this plant, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of folklore that gets confused uh, throughout time. Now, a lot of the native tribes use this for as a cure-all from everything from tuberculosis to venereal diseases to men menstrual cramps. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of modern day scientific data to back it up. Uh, on exactly how it works. We do know for a fact that it does have some antimicrobial properties to it, uh, but some people have actually gotten sick from ingesting this. So modern people trying to look for some kind of cure-all um, have tried this, ingesting it as tea and stuff like that, and they've actually ended up with kidney or liver damage. In small amounts, I don't think it hurts. Um, I have tried it in my younger foolish years, experimenting as a tea. It tastes absolutely atrocious, like chemical. So my best suggestion now is do not ingest it but you can use it on the outside you know as a scrub because once again we do know that there is some antimicrobial properties um, also this plant is famous because it smells beautiful when it rains uh, there's a certain desert rain smell that people you know it's pervasive out here in the in the American Southwest and they think it's the dirt you know the water mixing with the dirt it's actually not it's the waxes from this plant then it, it has waxes to try to preserve its moisture so it's not losing it in the daytime heat. But those waxes mix with water and it makes a very strong pungent smell that is just absolutely beautiful. A lot of people love that smell. So what we're going to do is once again, we're just going to use it as a scrub, mix it with water and it smells very good. So let's get a piece. We don't need a large piece. Let's get this one right here. There we go. Let's go ahead and mix it with some water. Okay, so we're back over here. I already went ahead and rinsed out that water, threw it out, dried it out uh, from the yucca root. Now we're gonna mix it, get some more water. Not, not too much, doesn't need a lot. And then we're gonna get this and throw it in here. Now reason why I say that it's, it makes a great little scrub to scrub yourself like this is not only does it smell good, and can help you you know get clean but also this is one of the very few plants out here in the desert that doesn't have some kind of thorn or spine you know out to get you so it's not the softest of plants i will not lie to you but at the same time it's not exactly uncomfortable either it's not going to hurt you you're not going to get cut from it so 
really good plant and though it doesn't have as strong suds as the other one as the yucca root sometimes if you notice you'll see a couple of suds in there as well so another good little plant in fact i would use them you know in combination i would get some of the yucca root put it in there and then i would use this as a scrub in case you don't have a towel or a bandana but it works very well this plant is just so so abundant out here in the american southwest the spanish called it la gobernadora which is uh the governess because it just goes everywhere and it actually impedes the growth of other plants through its root system so it's a little greedy for water like that and once again it gives this very beautiful desert rain smell in fact uh i have a little bit of a confession guys i don't have a sense of smell so i'm i'm completely no nose blind um I don't know whether it's faulty genetics or some kind of childhood injury I long forgot about. So I cannot smell anything at all. Uh, so I've been trying to work on this video for a long time, but I needed a lot of volunteers and, you know, what do you think about that? How do you smell that, you know? And uh, through, that, through those experiments, I've come to realize that ladies love this smell. I mean, it is just a, a crowd pleaser with the girls. So uh, they love the smell of desert rain. And I actually started taking this home now and I'll actually like wet wet it a little bit and have it in my house so it starts giving this pleasant smell i'll do it in my truck i even have this in the tub my bathtub at home so i'll just give it a little after rinse when i'm done showering so big fan of this plant a second use for this plant guys is it's a natural repellent for insects as i don't know if you noticed earlier there's just bugs all around us guys but bugs hate it this the wax that these leaves are coated in when you burn it it just makes this oily, greasy uh, fire, and it just, they cannot stand it. In fact, it's also known as greasewood because of that. So just to demonstrate, let's light that up. And let's put this baby right here. Check that out. Well guys, that's about the conclusion of this video. We're about to run out of sunlight, so I'm just gonna make this brief. I really wanted to come back and talk about the yucca root. Once again, we talked about it about two years ago in that SOG folding shovel review, but a lot of people that weren't interested in watching a review of a shovel, it kind of went past them. So I wanted to just come back and elaborate it on a little bit more. There's a couple of videos also with about Bob Hanser talking about it and his daughter Bree Outdoors as well. So in case you still have any questions, check them out as well. And then I wanted to talk about the creosote plant because I absolutely adore this plant. It's actually used almost daily for me. Um, I want to do, I still want to talk about a lot more of desert hygiene guys because hygiene is extremely important and something that's extremely overlooked it's easy for us to get excited about you know knives and hunting and stuff like that making fire but hygiene is extremely important you're more likely to die from some bacteria or some disease than you are from like a rattlesnake out here realistically so uh, i'm still going to try to talk about this m more as i go you know once again i can't smell so it takes me a little longer to do that research but if you like this video go ahead and give us a thumbs up Comment below if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.